I'll start with a video. The two players are, the players are playing and one player hit another player. Now one player's knee is hit by another player and patella dislocates. Look at the screen, patella dislocates. Now, we know as patella is hit, the MPFL got torn. But is it that MPFL got torn at this moment? If you look carefully, patella already got subluxated before another player hit it. That means there was a pre-existing trochlear dysplasia and the, patel, the hit by another player was just a coincidence leading to complete patella dislocation. Now come to another incidence. This is automated car, Tesla, and it is being driven and it is controlled on the track, by the track itself and by other cars on the road. And this will not leave its track. This will continue to drive on its track. Take another example. While we were coming from Ahmedabad to Wabi, whenever there was a car in front of us, we changed our lane. And when there was another car, we again changed the lane. But while frequently changing the lane, we were putting ourselves at risk. We were at the risk of accident. Same thing happens with patella. Patella is meant to travel on trochlea. It should glide on the trochlear groove. But what happens? Because of some reason, if there is more valgoid knee or a more higher Q angle, patella starts maltracking. It tracks over lateral trochlea. And if there is added trochlea dysplasia, it starts slipping out. And gradually, it dislocates. So that's what is happening with patella. Now look at another scenario. We are looking from the up. Normally, patella is supposed to glide down on the trochlea, and which is controlled by quadriceps tendon, patella tendon, LPFL and MPFL, and the trochlear group itself. But what happens if there is increased valgus angle? Patella starts maltracking. It goes more lateral side. And if there is a major block, say for example, there is a hyperplasia of lateral femoral condyle, which is shown here by black dot, then patella takes an easy way out. It goes, it bypasses the whole trochlea and goes out and it dislocates. My real, my real good friend, Mr. Professor Yamada from Japan, he published a very nice paper. What he published on a 3D analysis of patellar impression on trochlea, that normally trochlea, patella enters in the trochlea from lateral trochlear surface, it grows down as the flexion is increased and gradually in full flexion it is in the center of the trochlea. But what happens in recurrent dislocation cases? Patella enters from lateral trochlea, it continues to slide on the lateral trochlear surface, and it remains laterally. It never goes in the center of the trochlea. Another paper by him, where he published that normally, the patella glides in the center of the trochlea. It enters from lateral trochlea and remains in the center of the trochlea. But there are cases when actually patella is sliding, it enters lateral trochlea, and at full flexion, it goes into the a center of the trochlea. Now these images are basically shown in different flexion of the knee. The 3D analysis has been done in different flexion of the knee. And in other cases, I'm sorry, in another cases he showed that patella will enter from lateral trochlea, will remain on lateral trochlear surface and will exit, but it will never go in the center of the trochlea. And in another group of cases, patella will enter from the lateral trochlear surface and remain subluxated throughout the different degrees of flexion. Another two cases he showed, where he showed that in habitual dislocation, patella does enter trochlea from the lateral trochlear surface, but immediately dislocates. And in another group of patients, when we call it congenital dislocation, patella remains dislocated. It never enters lateral trochlear surface. It never enters into the trochlear groove. So all these things, all these different degree of flexion, it gives us one message. The message is that patella and trochlea has a different relation in different degree of flexion. There is no one relationship. If there is no one relationship, then why we are talking about Dijoux's classification? Dijoux is a very good friend of mine, and I had been following his classification, this classification all these years. And I used to tell my patients that you have got type A trochlear dysplasia, or type B trochlear dysplasia, or type C trochlear dysplasia. But actually now I think that probably it was beginning of the classifying the trochlear lesion, because look at this case. In this case, there is a female and all the sections are from one single patient. And if you look at here, this picture shows it is type C trochlear dysplasia. This picture shows it is type D trochlear dysplasia. This picture shows it is type B. And this shows a type A. That means one single patient at different level of trochlea has a different trochlear classification. There is no one classification for the whole for the patient. Trochlea behaves differently. At zero degree, it might be type A. At 10 degree, it might be type B. At 20 degree, it might be type C, or maybe something different. The same concept 
is difficult to understand, but we are trying to learn more about it. Recently, John Fulkerson presented a, uh, he uh, published a tweet, and he showed his office picture, and he put 3D printed trochlea on his desk, and he said that we are learning more about 3D printing of the trochlea. To which I replied that I agree, but it is a multi-dimensional deformity which we were trying to understand on two-dimensional picture. That means reduced classification. And 3D printing actually offers not three-dimensional, but multi-dimensional insight. To which John Fulkerson agreed and he said, yes, it is a great point. The same concept I presented in International Patella Study Group meeting in Canada, and I talked about it. So what we did was, we had a tie-up with Indian Institute of Technology with our institute. And what we do is, we get CT scan of all the affected knee cases, and then we collect DICOM images. These DICOM images are then underwent, and the 3D, and then 3D image processing is done, where as per our requirement, we can select the images which we needs to be printed and data needs to be shared, and then the whole data goes to a 3D printer, where the 3D printing is done using a polymer or ABS as per our requirement, and finally we get 3D printed patella trochlear joint. The beauty is, when you get patient's own knee printed, 3D printed in your hand, you know where the patella is entering in trochlea, at zero degree flexion, at 10 degree flexion, or 30 degree flexion. You can look from above, you look from down, or you can look from any angle, and you will exactly know what is happening with patella and trochlea in 3D images. To explain this further, I will just talk, show you a case. This is a female who at 27 years old, she had recurrent dislocation of patella for eight years, which was operated thrice in Delhi, Coimbatore, and Mumbai with big surgeons of India, and she was same after eight years. There was no relief in her case. She continued to dislocate patella. It was a habitual dislocation. And if you look at the video, as soon as she's flexing the knee, she's suddenly wincing in pain because patella is maltracking. What is actually happen happening is this. As soon as she flexes, the patella goes in little gutter, and she feels a lot of pain. I got her parameter or all patellotrochlear indexes measured, and to my surprise, everything was abnormal. All the angles were abnormal, and I had a alignment x-rays of her as well, and all her um, alignment indices were also abnormal. So I thought, what? What I need to correct? Everything is abnormal. All indexes are abnormal in her, and what shall I do? Finally, I decided, let me go in, let me do, and also, in addition to that, she had a big cartilage lesion on patella, which is seen in different images over here. So I decided, let me go in and do surgery. First, I'll do arthroscopy and decide what is happening. And I could see that the trochlea was actually normal. Trochlea was shallow, but it was not that bad. On the little gutter, I can see the cartilage lesion. If you can see here, this is the cartilage lesion on the little gutter. So the patella was rubbing, patella was rubbing on the little gutter. It was moving out from the little condyle, and there was a big cartilage defect on medial patellar facet. But otherwise, trochlea did not look bad to me. This was the place where the patella was rubbing in little gutter. So I was confused what to do, but finally I thought, let me do my technique. I did superficial quad technique to reconstruct it, MPFL in her, and I thought, let me see what is happening after MPFL reconstruction using this technique. And voila, I was like happy. As soon as I did MPFL reconstruction, patella was bang on in the center of the trochlea. In every degree of flexion, patella was moving in the center of the trochlea. The large cartilage defect is seen, which I need to address later on. And I thought, okay, three times failed, one surgery, and she's done. There is no problem, and she will not have any problem. And that was actually the case. The pain had gone. She was very happy because she said she never dislocated patella again, and she was very comfortable. But if you look carefully, when she's extending the knee and flexing it, there was a third. This third was there. It was not painful, but this third was there. And it was like very intriguing to me. What is happening to her? I put her patella back in the trochlea, and why she's having that problem again? At that time, I decided, let me take help of 3D printing in her case so I know what is happening. And when I had 3D printed knee at 30 degree of flexion, you can see that her patella is very much in the center of the trochlea. The patella is very much in the center of trochlea. There should not be any problem. So I got 3D printed in full extension. And again, patella is very much in the center. There is no problem with patella. And then I got confused why she's having that third sound. And then I thought that she's having that pro problem when she's fully extending the knee. So I got her knee printed in full extension with quadriceps muscle contracted. And when I got that done, I will show you on this video in full extension. This is hyperextension with quadriceps contracted. The patella is totally out of trochlea. You can see over here, 
the Patela is not even engaged in full extension, it is totally out. And then I look back at the indices and I found out that, okay, this is one which is creating the problem. Her insult salvati was 1.26 and probably that is creating the problem. So I went in again, I did TBL tuberosity transfer, I distalized it, fixed it, and at the same time, I thought that let me do the correct cartilage problem also, so I took the cartilage biopsy. And in uh, six weeks time, we did uh, ACI and we implanted chondrocytes on her medial patellar facet cartilage defect. So simultaneously, distalization was done and uh, ACI was done in her case. The MPFL was already done in first surgery. And this was the result. She came back to me at two years. Her cartilage is fully regenerated. It is thickly regenerated. It is homogeneous. It is smooth. It is isotense on MRI and she doesn't have any pain. And if you look at the clinical picture, this was the first picture when she had a severe pain and patella was dislocating on every flexion. This is the second time when she relocated the patella, but the third was there which was very much disturbing to him. And this is after two years of follow-up with MPFL reconstruction, distalization of TBL tuberosity, and cartilage repair. And now she doesn't have that third. So what helped? This is my last slide. This is usually the practice, the methodology I, which I practice. Depending on the causes of uh, pathology, I know that usually MPFL, which is not the uh, culprit but the victim, MPFL gets torn. So I always associate my surgeries with MPFL reconstruction. But if there is too much of trochlear dysplasia or too much of tibial tuberosity abnormally, I enter, added trochlear dysplas uh, trochleoplasty or tibial tuberosity transfer. But I learned one thing over here, that if there is too much of patellotrochlear abnormality, it is always better, more so in a complicated case, it is better to do 3D printing of the patellotrochlear joint in different degree of flexion, and that will give you an insight how patella is entering into the trochlea, and it will give you a more information, because these patients, they get multiple surgeries done, and then still they are not happy. So probably this can help them. And we can have these pictures for our benefit. Thank you very much.